Joe Biden, my time Biden, uh, is proposing a $4 trillion infrastructure bill. My friends, you know, Biden just passed the 1.9 American Rescue Bill, right? And now he's in Pennsylvania. What is it? Philadelphia? What is it? Well, Pittsburgh. Pittsburgh. I think he's in Pittsburgh. Uh, you know, releasing a uh, his press release that he wants Congress to pass four trillion dollars to build bridges, highways. Uh, what else is it that, that, that I think that uh, infrastructure for re refabricating homes, making homes more energy efficient, um, et cetera. Just as a parent, just parenthetically, see, man, you see, you got a lot of experience. You can bring this guy. Yeah, I can. You know, we went to China 20 years ago. I took our first trip to China. 20, 17 years ago, it was 17 years ago, we took our first trip, trip to China. Now, our first trip to China, we were, or, arrived in Beijing, and everywhere you looked, there were bicycles everywhere you looked, and, and, and you could tell the, the sense of poverty and brokenness. And one of the things that our tour guide, though we were on a, a nice bus that took us around Shanghai, and uh, took it all, it would say to spend money and, and help the local economy. China's program then was, and I'm coming back to our infrastructure, at the time they were building Olympics that were held in China, they were building this massive, this massive mile-long, if you will, arena in China for the global Olympics. And uh, so they wanted people to come to China, spend money. So we got, we got a really cheap airfare, cheap hotels, so for a nice, nice airline. Anyway, uh, but China was very poorly infrastructured. We went back two years ago, three years ago, went back to China, and the place is as modern as Los Angeles. The Los Angeles makes Los Angeles look like a, a country farm. They've got new highways, interconnected highways, byways, all kinds of overpasses, bridges, hotels, stores, shops. I mean, China it looks like, I mean, Paris and London all rolled into one, a New York City Fifth Avenue. Uh, because they built and they've got train bullet trains that travel at 170 miles an hour. You can go from Beijing to Shanghai in a couple of hours. Incredible. So we need a new infrastructure. I appreciate what Biden is doing. Our bridges are crumbling. You know, every time I cross over a bridge, I wonder if this thing going to give away under me. Uh, the our highways are potholed. You know, our train systems are antiquated. Elizabeth and I took a trip down to North Carolina uh, a couple of years ago on Amtrak, and we took one of those birthday joints where you get a sleeping car, right? We took one of them joints, and so we could sleep and, you know, have our private dining and everything inside the joint. And lo and behold, between, I don't know, what was it, between Virginia and Maryland somewhere, Washington, D.C., some water tank busted loose, the train stopped cold, water flooded into our place, water all up and down the car. It was a mess. You walk in the carpet, is sogging, water under your feet. You wonder if you're going to get electrocuted, you know. And we sat there for four hours on the track till somebody could come and, 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 and fix whatever was going on in the car. And then when we got down to Richmond, they put us on another train. It's crazy. Old trains traveling 30, 40 miles an hour, the highest Fastest Amtrak will go be 60 miles. They got trains in Japan and China, man. Those things run 170 miles an hour. It's smooth as silk. So we are really in need of infrastructure. Now, the deal is this, is that who's going to get these jobs? The Mexicans. That's like I'm Biden is letting them in. The Mexicans going to get these jobs. You say, well, Mexicans don't know nothing about building bridges and engineering and all of that kind. They don't know anything. No, they don't. But they can take the jobs now that the engineers and bridge builders who are doing menial work, we can train the Mexicans to do that work. And then we can train those who are, who are already trained as engineers to take over the big time job. Of, of spending this four trillion dollars of infrastructure, re, refabricating buildings all over the all over America, the Mexicans. We need the Mexicans. So Biden is letting Mexicans in. They're gonna let another million of Mexicans in, and they're gonna be plenty of money for them too, because jobs are gonna be all over everywhere. Which, in one way, kind of contradicts what I've said about inflation. I still think inflation is coming. But this is going to be a flood of money into the four trillion dollars. You know how much money that is? That's not money to stack dollar bills all the way out there to Jupiter. 
That's a lot of cash. I've never ever been a bill that big before. But the Mexicans are coming. The jobs are going to be there. Um, I do think that urban life is going to change drastic. I think people are going to, you know, retreat to, you know, suburban life because everybody can work from home. And, I, you know, if you don't have, if you're not online now and permanently online, your business is not going to make it. You know, you 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 know, you can do banking online. You can actually sit in your house and deposit your check from your computer. I mean, you you don't even know teller no more. I remember years ago when there was automation of the telephone system. You know, you call a telephone. You want to call somebody, you have to go through an operator. Operator, operator. <laughs> hey, years ago, now y'all don't have any idea. That's even before the, the, the street phones had party lines. And then all of a sudden, you know, your operator was sitting there and they'd plug you into a system and they'd go on long distance. You plug long distance. And the operator would be sitting there listening to everything you're talking to. But now you just dial the number. My God, now your telephone is a camera, it's a computer, it's a calculator. Yeah, my God, it's an encyclopedia. Well, good God Almighty, what a change. Take a person old as me, been living through all this, you wonder. I mean, it's like a tidal wave has come upon you. But the thing I want to say is that when that took place in the, in the telephone, a lot of operators lost their job. You know, a lot of people used to work as operators, get paid as operators, sitting there all day on those stools, lost their jobs uh, at technology. You know, I've seen uh, Audi has got a new car, uh, a, a elect, elect, uh, electrical car. Uh, they've got cars now to drive themselves. I mean, really can't. I mean, you can. They call to park themselves. I plan, I plan, I plan on buying me a new one too, because I don't want to get that left, be left out the loop pretty soon. But so when this four trillion dollars and the infrastructure, they're going to build highways, my friend. That if a car is speeding, you'll get a ticket. If a car, they can. The, the highways are going to be so built, like they have in China, that you can prevent accidents. You'll probably never see an accident again. Because the highway, they got things in automobiles right now. They got uh, computers in automobile. If you get too close to a car, the car will stop itself. You could be drunk, crazy, you know, fighting with your children. The car will stop itself and say, hey, you got enough sense to drive on now? The highways are going to do that now. Forget about the cars doing it. The highways will not let get cars within a certain distance of each other. You probably will never have an automobile accident. That's going to do something with the insurance industry in terms of automobile insurance, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. The world is getting ready to change. While at the same time, at the same time, if you found something, I mean, Bob, my engineer is on the ball. He done found that thing. Look at that. Look, look at that. Look at that. Look at that. See, you know, they, they, you, if that, five years from now, there'll probably never, never be another automobile accident. Never. Because they just won't hit each other. They just won't do it. You may try to do it, but they won't do it. The car will automatically stop itself. But that's just a small, and not in the automobiles now. The highways will be so designed to check all of that out, right? And then train stations, air travel, you know, all of that. Biden wants to do a $4 trillion joint, you know. And so, well, we'll see how all that's going how, how to work out. Um, and uh, I would say to anyone that, you know, you need to go on churches that didn't go online, you know, 10 years ago, uh, going to have a difficult time trying to get in the mix now. Even churches with large congregations, you know, you, you just, you, businesses that are not online businesses. I think one of the smartest things I've ever heard of was Uber decided to do food delivery. I tried to get some young men I had about, 300 men here in the church at one point in time over the course of a year. I tried to get them to start a delivery business, bicycle delivery, delivering on bicycle in the rain, sleet, or snow, we go. And they wouldn't do it. They wouldn't do it. They wouldn't do it because the city offered them a welfare check and disability and housing, and they wouldn't do it. But if they had done it, if they had done what I told Elder Hartfield, I'm glad he's still around because he knows I, I preach this day in and day out to these men to stop these businesses, start these small stores. They would not do it. And the reason why, they say, why should we do that? We can go, we can go on disability. <laughs> we can get housing. We can get, we can get, and they, and they did. 
And I threw him out of the church too, by the way. <laughs> anyway, everybody, you listen to the man of This is a bit of a news blog we do, looking at spiritual wickedness in high places for the most part, making uh, some observations about it and giving people a biblical foundation to the way of interpreting rather than have uh, uh, Sean Hannity or Laura Ingram or Janine Pirro or Anderson Cooper or Rachel Maydow or Don Lemon, uh, Rush Limbaugh interpret what's going on in the world. You come to me and I'll tell you based on what the word of God says. They'll just give you their worldly sinful view. But the man will tell you what God has said whether to say yea or nay, whether to go or to stay. You'll be led by the word of Almighty God. Come to the Manning Report on a daily basis to interpret the spiritual wickedness in high places because there's plenty of it that's going on. And so I am he, I'm the Lord, sir, James David Righteous Rebel Manning. And I'm here to serve you with news and information. Over the years, we have served more than one million meals to hungry bellies and hungry people here in the Harlem community. And I wanted you to be able to see that. I want you to see our involvement with youth, our summer youth programs, the, uh, our courtyard being used as a, uh, a place where children can be safe, guarded, and protected as they have their miniature swimming pools. Um, and a safe place for children to eat that is guarded, that is protecting, protected by our own sense of security and the wholesome and fresh meals that, um, that we serve. We, we wanted you to be able to see the mission of this church. And we've been doing this for years. Just recently, one of our members, more than a 30-year member of this church, but it hasn't, not one that... You know that you would probably find as members of some other churches with their nose stuck up in the air. But her father is now close to death or very sick in the state of South Carolina. And uh, what I said to her, what I said, well, because she doesn't have money, I said, we will buy you a bus ticket, a round trip bus or train ticket for you to travel to South Carolina to, to be with your father in this time of pandemic. There's very little funding around. There's, there's sickness everywhere. And and she the thing that just blew me away was she said as she was talking to Elizabeth, she said, but how are you going to do that, to, to pay for me a round-trip ticket to, to travel and give me expense money? And because you got to, Pastor Manning has to feed the children. He has to take, he has to educate the children. He has to buy school supplies for them. He has to pick them up in the mornings and take them back. And then he's got the ministry he has to take care of, all the bills of running the church, of keeping a major house like our house operational, keep the lights on, keep the, how are you going to be able to do that? And she was almost reluctant to take the money because she felt that it would be better served by feeding the children. We gave it to her anyway. But we want you to know that we do a work in this community. There have been a lot of lies told on us. And it's almost unimaginable why some of the people that have lied on us. But I can tell you behind all of it is the LGBTQ community. They don't want us to be successful, but we are and we're going to continue to be successful in serving the meals that we're serving and serving the people that we are. And the LGBTQ community will not take us down. They are not going to take our church, yet they have defamed us. They've written ugly newspaper articles about us. They've marched against us. They've done a whole lot of ugly things. But you see what we have done, and that's not even the half of our service to children and to the needy in terms of our homeless shelters and the things that we've done over the years, and we will continue. And probably the lies and the smears and the ugly newspaper articles and the wicked spirits and the so-called I ain't for the black man, that is not going to go away. I don't expect it to go away. I don't. But I do tell you this, that we will succeed. 
against all of that, for God is with us and I am his servant. 